soldiers to the front lines faster than ever before. Strikers are the Army's latest high-tech vehicles. Combining state-of-the-art communication systems with highly skilled troops, striker brigades can maneuver almost silently while unleashing heavy firepower. It's got great protection, it's fast. I think if you talk to my soldiers, they'll tell you that they wouldn't want to be in any other vehicle. With 10 variants, the striker is designed to handle almost every combat scenario. Battle tested, they can survive a direct hit. For striker brigades, every mission is a trial by fire, and survival depends on seamlessly integrating man and machine. Mosul, Iraq. A patrol of four strikers comes under small arms fire from a hidden enemy. Reacting quickly and in constant vehicle to vehicle contact, the striker teams give chase. Here, in a maze of narrow streets, insurgents disappear as quickly as they pop up. At this location, we took a small arms fire, engaged it. At this time, these four is uh, doing a cordon around the building that we uh, received fire from. The nine-man infantry squad from one striker fans out over a city block, trying to flush out the sniper. Each soldier stays in radio contact with his vehicle, which plots infantry positions and relays them to dozens of other squads. Assessing the big picture, commanders deploy another team to aid in the search. Go, go, go. Intelligence suggests that an insurgent may be hiding in this house. While they hold the suspect, they search the house from top to bottom. At first, they find nothing. Several strikers set up a perimeter. And another squad joins the search. With the aid of an informant, the soldiers home in on hiding places. Their raid brings to light a lethal stockpile. The striker team's ability to communicate with each other and to get in and out quickly keeps the insurgents off guard. Striker teams are at the forefront of army innovation with only a few active brigades. As one brigade prepares to rotate from the front lines, another trains to take its place, thousands of miles away in the Pacific Northwest. Fort Lewis, Washington, is one of the Army's oldest and largest bases, providing 87,000 acres of training area for over 20,000 soldiers. Today, the soldiers of the 3rd Striker Brigade are readying their strikers as part of an Emergency Deployment Readiness Exercise, or EDRI. By nightfall, over 400 soldiers, 50 vehicles, and enough supplies and equipment for a week must be ready to roll. Overseeing this exercise is Colonel Steve Townsend. Fort Lewis is a great place for striker brigades and to assist striker brigades in their training and, and activation process. Uh, Fort Lewis is the home of what we call the uh, striker uh, center for uh, training and leader development. What that means is there's a superb suite of ranges, training areas, and simulations facilities that are specifically designed to help uh, train striker organizations and leaders. Just as in combat, the 3rd Striker Brigade prepares to roll out at a moment's notice. 
Uh, right now, the soldiers are all prepping to go to the field. Uh, they're getting their equipment ready as far as their weapons, uh, their actual individual equipment, everything from making sure they have water and earplugs to uh, their actual uniforms ready to go. Basically, they're coming out, they're uh, gonna check everything from the oil, the tire pressure, the computer systems inside, and then we have to load the vehicle with all of the uh, equipment. We've, got, we've been here since about six o'clock this morning. Uh, so it takes a lot of time, a lot of effort. Strikers have the advantage of delivering soldiers exactly where they need to be and in the right condition to fight. Well, the striker has the ability to take a full infantry squad and deliver us, you know, right on the threshold of the battle. You know, it, it just takes us there quicker than any other vehicle can. It drops us off and we're ready to fight. We're fresh, we're not tired from movement. Uh, we're ready to just get right into it. We've got all our equipment with us. We are mechanized, we're mobilized infantry. But as soon as we hit the ground, we're a light infantry again. We're a light fighting force. Powered by a 350 horsepower engine, but only half the weight of a tractor trailer, the Striker is a formidable combination of mobility and stealth. To get a sense of how the Striker stacks up against other military vehicles, you need to look at its vital stats. The Striker costs about $4 million, roughly the same price as the Bradley fighting vehicle. 23 feet long, 9 feet wide, and 8 and a half feet high, it weighs in at under 40,000 pounds, one-third that of the M1A2 main battle tank. The main version of the Striker carries a nine-man infantry team, five more soldiers than the Humvee. Yet on the highway, it can keep up with speeds reaching 70 miles per hour. Striker teams can travel hundreds of miles in a single day. With eight wheels instead of tracks, it offers the road performance of a Humvee with potent firepower. Its versatility has allowed the Striker and its crews to carry out a variety of missions. The Striker uh, combat vehicle is a superb vehicle, and our soldiers have a whole lot of confidence in it. It's fast, it has long legs, long range, uh, and it's quiet. Uh, this brigade earned the nickname the Ghost of Samara during our last Iraq deployment because they arrived in the, in the dead of night and no one knew they were there. In Fort Lewis, the 3rd Brigade begins its exercise at night to simulate a combat mission. The striker is road legal and they take to the interstate, heading east 120 miles to Yakima. In the deserts of eastern Washington, they will face intense round-the-clock training with live munitions that will test both man and machine. The striker represents a break from the traditional army philosophy that separates light and heavy fighting forces, a tradition that goes back more than a century. <laughs> 